Hello everyone <clears throat> and, and, and welcome to the February month at ADM uh, Application Delivery Management Service monthly webinar. Uh, as, as we know, right, a couple of folk, a few folks joined into the old slot and, and we have changed the uh, timings for the uh, EMEA and AP, AP, APEC customers for uh, this current time slot. So thanks for uh, noticing it and, and, and take, taking our point time to join this one. So who all we have online today? Uh, myself, Avinash Pandey. I'm from the Citrix ADM product management team. And I have my follow, fellow uh, product management colleagues, Sayukta, uh, she is also from ADM. And we have Mayur, who is from CNN, who will be taking us through the service graph and, and Sayukta for uh, style books. And we have, uh, from the app set, we have Akhil Nair and Lena. Lena is our solution architect directors for the app application security. And, and Akhil is product manager. So uh, with this, let's talk about what is the agenda for today. So first I will be uh, taking you through the overview of ADM service. As we know, right, uh, a lot of folks who might be new and want to understand what all are there into the ADM service to get quickly started with. So it will cater the need for those. And, 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 and next we will be talking about what all, uh, this is a new thing which I've added from last um, uh, webinar that we will be every month showing up what all new feature or enhancements which has been done since the last meeting we had together onto the webinar sessions. So that in case if we are not able to cover all the features in that same webinar session, at least who are waiting for those features or enhancement uh, can be made aware through this um, uh, notification notice board. And of course, in, in, in all those topics, which all those features which do get covered in this will be uh, will take attention and get in detailed discussions into the future webinars. Uh, in, 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 in both the uh, time slots which we have for this webinar. So uh, next is, is the topics which which we are going to be covering here is application security updates. What are new things which have come around the application security analytics which will be covered by Akil and Lena. Then we'll be talking through the latest updates over the style works. Again, it, this will be covered by uh, Sayukta followed by improvements into the service graph which will be covered by Mayu, and then the last section I have reserved for myself, which will be the primer section where every month we talk come across with some of the basic uh, features which can help uh, uh, the AD, which can help an administrator or an enterprise to utilize the ADM service in a more efficient way, and and maybe some basic features which they may or may not be aware can help to um, address a lot of uh, uh, issues within the um, ADC infrastructure. So with this. Uh, Let's quickly talk about how you can jumpstart with the ADM service in the quick three steps. First and foremost is you need to have a creation of a Citrix cloud account. With that, we have to select the ADM service. Once the ADM service has been selected, the, the second step is to you have to select the inbuilt agent mode to easily discover all the uh, ADC uh, in, within your infrastructure with this inbuilt agent mode. All you have to do is use the service URL and activation code and configure to configure it over the ADC and your ADCs will be discovered. Now, what are the various advantages of the ADM services? So for the ADM service, the first advantage is it's very agile, which means it's very easy to operate. All the latest updates comes on time then being a cloud service. There are no hassles of high availability or DR which you have to take into consideration unlike an on-prem environment, which means you get the highest availability. Then the second point is faster time to value, which means you, as, as I was demonstrating, how easy it is to get started with, you know, uh, the discovery of the devices and start the management and monitoring aspect of it. So it gets started within very few few clicks, and so which means you save a, a lot of time in deciding and and and, and uh, designing the infrastructure over the ADM. Second, it has third, it has the very good state of art, unique, advanced machine learning, which which helps. Uh, once the applications are discovered and, and, and the statistical data starts to come over the ADM service, it's advanced machine learning actually highlights you the traffic pattern and, 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 can, uh, and, and can show you the anomalies around the application based on its usage pattern. Fourth, it has a very low operational cost, which means within very less time and very less resources and money, you can bring up your uh, uh, ADM service to uh, cater all the management, management, monitoring, as well as the analytics uh, uh, uses. 
Fourth, uh, fifth one, it has, uh, it, it actually supports pretty much any ADC environment. So if you have a public cloud set up for ADCs or it is on-prem or it is a hybrid, which which caters both mix of on-prem as well as public cloud, uh, it, it, it supports pretty much any ADC environment along with any kind of applications are supported, be it monolithic or microservices. So uh, let's say uh, you have decided to onboard the ADM service. So what you get is your journey starts with the express tier. Within the express tier, what you get, uh, you pretty much get all the functionality and features available across the express, uh, express uh, tier of the ADM service, which means there is no limit to any configuration jobs or style books. Entire management and monitoring capability is open for you. However, it is, it is restricted with the analytics capability. It is restricted to two virtual server for analytics. So, uh, and, and the other point to uh, notice, uh, the data retention is only up to 500 MB or one day of data, whichever is lesser. So let's say uh, you have onboarded the ADM service or, or you have been already trying uh, with the express license and you are happy to move uh, uh, and expand your management and monitoring with respect to uh, even whether it is event management or syslog management or other features like network reporting and and uh, and again if you want to even jump on and, and jump on and increase your analytics capability for all the applications then the next step for you is to go into the advanced license advanced license open up the all the uh, open up the uh, anal analytics uh, capability around hdx gateway inside web inside app dashboard security analytics with ml based app security analytics these all gets open and 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 uh, with uh, the number of virtual server licenses you purchase in and let's say if you have uh, you have a very specific need of uh, number of virtual server licenses but your storage needs are higher then you have an additional storage sq wherein you can purchase and buy an additional storage based upon your um, uh, uh, adm services utilization now uh, what are the new feature or enhancements which has been published since jan 25th release note uh, that is uh, uh, somewhere around our last uh, webinar in Jan month when we all met together. Uh, within management and monitoring, uh, two things which has came up is, now we have the support for show configuration templates within the configuration job, which means unlike just uh, wherein you were leveraging it to push the configurations, now you can just push the show configuration to get the output of those. And, and you can, uh, on all other capabilities around it, like scheduling it, getting the notification around it, all those things remain same. It's just that we have the additional capability around it to have the show configuration. The other one is the configuration of action policies to receive the application event notification, which, which is uh, now you can receive the event notification around the uh, uh, global settings and action, for, uh, 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 and you can create the actions around it to receive the notification. The, uh, under the application and analytics, we have the uh, infrastructure structure analytics where we have now uh, uh, option to configure notification for specific issues. There are improvements around the service graph. Uh, in uh, style books, we have three new updates which have came, came in is the update of style book configuration pack, which are, which are automatically reconciled, manage data source in ADM, check the style book compatibility of for a configuration pack. Now, few of them, uh, we uh, as we are talking here from the last uh, feature enhancements, which we discussed in last uh, webinar and, and, and today's feature list, uh, uh, we will be covering uh, all the style book enhancement today and, 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 and the service book, uh, sorry, the service graph and uh, feature, feature improvements, uh, including the uh, uh, application security as well. Rest all which, which are mentioned around the management and monitoring. Again, these, as I said, right, we will be, showcasing all and covering uh, all of them in, in, in upcoming webinars. So uh, with this, I will uh, hand over uh, the uh, uh, presentation to Akhil and, and Lena to uh, take us through the uh, latest over the application security. Thank you, Avinash. Can you make me presenter? Sure, Lena. I think you should have received. Yes, and I believe you can see my screen, right? Yeah, I can. So, 
Thank you, Avinash. Many new features. Glad to see every month. We have more and more new features on ADM service. Because ADM service provides all the innovation, differentiation, and value to all the solutions, and especially to application security with security analytics, machine learning analytics, and as well as control plane. And we will talk about number of features today. I will start with web application firewall solution. And everything we'll talk about, that is ADC and ADM together, because that is our solution altogether. Now, web application firewall is a very mature solution. It was fully integrated into Citrix ADC, Netscaler at that time, over 10 years ago. But team is constantly working on innovations, right? For next generation WAF. And what is mostly in focus? How to make everything easy for you, our customers, and how did you how to reduce false positives, right? Now, what did we do lately? To reduce false positives, we added SQL grammar. We had SQL injection chip for many years, but we turned it into SQL grammar that reduces false positives. And very soon, we'll also have cross-site scripting with reducing false positives. Again, that's the same chip you have for number of years. Now we changed it to reduce false positives. Right? Now, how to make it really easy, especially for new customers? And for that, we introduce what it's called no rules WAF automate rule creation with WAF recommendations. And as I said, it is especially important for new users. I don't know how does web application firewall work. I don't know how to configure it. I do know that I do want to protect my application. So how ADC and ADM solution can help me with that? So on ADM, we have, and you will see demo very soon, what we call scanner, application scanner. And it's not vulnerability scan, but it's very similar. It does scan your backend application, but the goal is to come up with recommendation rules with web application firewall configuration. And then with one click, you should be able to push it, right? And you will see how to do it. You will see recommendations, as you can see on the right, right? For security checks, signatures, and how configuration is created. So let's see it in action. So we see ADM screen. Right? And under security, right? where you have your security dashboard and violation, we have WAF recommendations. When we click WAF recommendations, you can see all your applications here that you can scan if you wish. And you can search for your application. Let me search for mine. My application is Cloud Tracker. Right? And I did already scan, and I will show you how simple it is to scan, but let's first view report and see what's happening after you run scanner. You can see on the right hand side all the details about scanner. When scan was running, right, it detects all the details about your application. What technology was used, as you can see for my application, 
right? What JavaScript library was used? What is operating system? What was programming language? What type of server it is? <clears throat> and what are different vulnerabilities that we detected? We can see all the details with vulnerabilities. You can see number of pages here. You can see cross-site scripting and SQL injection vulnerabilities. You can see all the form we detected for this application, or is it all the form fields, right? The number of pages and URL. So I want to see all the details, always can look for it. But what is the most important here, that is what my net result. What should be my configuration for that particular application, Cloud Tracker? So I can click to review, <clears throat> and you can see all the security checks that recommended for my application. I can make changes. If I don't want to put something in blocking mode, I can uncheck if I, if I wish. I can also make changes in configuration if I wish. But again, if I don't know what needs to be there, I have a full set of configuration for security checks and for signature, right? So 232 signatures enabled out of over 2,000, right? And I can click apply recommendation and they would be applied right away. You might ask, okay, you apply, where do they go? And as you know, also configuration can be done via style box. So configuration here also done via style box. And if I look at config paths, right, you can see config path for cloud tracker, right? That's what happening when I push configuration. You can see config path that is done here, right? Now, how to start the scan, right? Let me, let's look at that. What should I do to start the scan, right? If I go to, again, for my application, Cloud Tracker. Uh, it will take a second to bring it up and say start scan, right? Again, very simple. It's based on what is my application, Right? Is it running over HTTP or HTTPS? Where to start? What's the URL to start? If I have some login URLs or logout URLs, I can put them there. I can select SQL cross-site scripting if I want to run vulnerability for those. Any additional setting, and that's it. And I will say scan, and in a couple of minutes, I'll be done and have all my configuration I need to start with web application firewall and get fully protected, including log4j as well at once. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, happy to answer. And with that, I'll turn it over to Akil. Akil. Are you ready? Yes, thanks a lot, Lena. Um, Avinash, can you make me the presenter, please? Sure. I can make the presenter. Okay, let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, we can. And Okay, um, all right, uh, so action policies. Uh, um, Akil, we have lost your screen too. Yeah. Let me know if, if you need Can it. you see it now? Um, not yet. Not yet, okay. How about now? 
Yes. Now is good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So hello everyone. I'm Akhil Nair, and for the ADNS product portfolio, and I'll be looking after the application security charter. So uh, action policy. This is part of the new feature that was introduced earlier uh, in the month of January, as Avinash covered it in his earlier slide. Now, to give you a high-level view of what action pol policy initiative is, it basically tries to achieve uh, two outcomes. One is obviously to notify you when a certain event has occurred. And the second part is to enable the end user to take an action or uh, have a system generate a recommended remedial action that the user can take an action on. Now, this covers different aspects of events under ADM service, but today we will be focusing on only the application security part, that is the bot and web violations. Now, uh, as you can see here, uh, you can easily configure an action policy and you can configure it in a way to receive event notifications over Slack, email, pager duty, or a service now. It includes uh, performance issues, bot and web, as explained earlier. And uh, configuring it is, again, it's very uh, as simple as you see here on the screen. Basically, th this is the left left-hand side navigation menu bar. Under actions, you simply click on action policies. From where you get to define what uh, policy you want, uh, define policies for different events, and you can get event notifications in real time. Now, coming over to the uh, defining po uh, policy itself. Now, this allows you to enable or define policies for different type of events, uh, set a certain condition, and then how do you want to be notified? So currently, under security violations, we support uh, bot violations and three WAP violation, that is SQL, XSS, and Infer uh, XML. Now, again here, this is, uh, this is the initial violations that we provide, and in future, we will be adding more to it. Bot violations will be separated or segregated based on the different type of mechanisms or different detection mechanisms that you use, let's say IP refutation, a signature, device fingerprinting, et cetera. And once you define what kind of event you want to be notified of, you can select, you can set the condition for the same. Now the different conditions that are available to you would be based on profile, the instance IP, violation count and violation ratio. Now, if you uh, have a look at the image here, you can see that I have set a multiple condition, which essentially says that for, uh, for any bot violation, if the violation count is more than 50, and if the bot profile uh, matches or contains the certain string, that is bot sick profile, then you notify me over email. Now I can, again, configure this to be notified over Slack or PagerDuty or any other SIEM as well, and even through email, and then pass it to my own system for further analysis and troubleshooting. And this is how uh, a sample email notification would look like. So here, this is an example of a violation percentage where it says that a bot violation exceeded 55, uh, approximately 56%. And this was calculated because based on the total bot request and the total bot that was reset. And if you, just simply by taking a ratio, you get that. And this is what the Slack notification would look like when a certain threshold has breached or when, the cert, or when a certain violation has occurred. Now, uh, coming over to uh, the advanced ML use cases, uh, which we provide only on our ADM service today. We have around 14 different use cases that we cover under uh, bot violations as well as uh, WAF violations. Uh, we made the fake account creation under WAF violation uh, available very recently, and you can use it to check if there was uh, any suspicious sign-up attempts that were made on your externally facing application. Now, uh, why, why would you want an AIML application to detect anything? Now, if you think about it, right, bot is nothing but a script uh, used to make some automated action. And uh, typically, it would just come over to your website, do certain actions such as upload or download or simply scrape content or scan your website. And as, as any other piece of technology, bots have the tendency to evolve and they will start performing more and more human-like actions. And one such is the account takeover. 
uh, basically what it means is, uh, let's say if I'm a malicious actor, I will write a script or a bot in such a way that it will take over an end user's account. This usually happens when uh, when a malicious actor comes across a compromised or a brief username or password, and then they try to use the same credentials to log into another account on different and various websites, or they will simply try to brute force their way into an account by password spraying. They will start with some commonly used passwords and then they will move on ahead. Now, as you all know, Citrix gateway login pages are continuously exposed to public over the internet. So it makes them very susceptible to such attacks. So that is why we have the account takeover for a gateway use case. Now, uh, before I get into it, just wanted to let you know that configuring it again is, is very simple. All you need to do is under your licensing and analytics page, under advanced option, you just need to enable this check that is Citrix Gateway. And that's it. Once you enable this, uh, ATO for Gateway will be enabled. And if there are any likely indications of an account takeover attacks, then it will be populated under your security violations page. Now, this is how it would look like under the security violation page under the bot. Uh, there are, if you see the graph here, there are three key metrics that we need to focus on. One is the blue line. The other one is the purple line, and the third one is the orange dot. Now, the blue line indicates the total number of successful logins, whereas the purple indicates the total number of failed logins. Now, if there is an, an, a likely indication that uh, there is an ATO attack, then it will mark it with, uh, with an orange dot here. And with this, with the details that is available here, you can check the table below that says that on 25th January, somewhere around 337, there was an unusual login activity out of which there were uh, 3,180 uh, 3, uh, uh, failed logins and only 176 were successful logins. And because of this unusually high uh, failure to success ratio, it indicates that this could be a likely bot attack. And if you want further details, you can simply click on uh, the client tab, uh, uh, the hyperlink here, which says, and when you click on that, you get to see further details or you get to drill down on the exact time and date, what client IP was used and what were the total number of attempts that had happened here. But as, as yeah, so that is, and as with respect to any other ML, AI ML use case, right, to reach to this place, you, the system, it needs to learn your usage. How many users are actually trying to log in? How many uh, of them log in successfully uh, at first attempt and get that ratio? And then it will, in, in two weeks time, it will learn that pattern and then it will keep on learning continuously. And once this uh, detects, it will keep on uh, informing you on an hourly basis whether if there is an anomaly or not. Now, what you need to do, uh, as, as I said before, you need to do nothing but just go to the licensing and analytics page and enable gateway insights. Once that is done, after the learning period is over, you should start seeing anomalies, if any. And with the data that you get on different IP of the time, you can send it to your SecOps team for any further analysis. And we will be supporting an additional Splunk add-on where you can export these AIML violations to your Splunk dashboard. So uh, with that, I am. Uh, this is it for my part. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will answer them over on the chat. Uh, with that, I'll pass on the baton to Sayyipta. Thank you all. Thanks, Akhil. Thanks, Akhil. Thanks, that was. Please go ahead, Sayyipta. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Please, could you? Uh, sure. Be I will. Presenter? Sure. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, thanks, Akhil, for the great update on security side. I'll now take uh, you all through the updates on what we've done in Stylebooks. Uh, I'm sure most of you know what Stylebooks is, but just for those of you who are new to Stylebooks or may not have explored it or heard about it, uh, Stylebooks are essentially templates or a, a very templatized way of deploying applications. Uh, these are the key use cases which Stylebooks help with. You can deploy a uh, simple ADC functionality as well as complex ADC functionality uh, using Stylebooks. You can also deploy uh, enterprise applications in a very simple and templatized manner using Stylebooks. 
uh, Stylebooks goes a step ahead in application configuration because it logically can group all the configurations belonging to a specific app and have that correlation kept between deploying the configuration and understanding it even in future that this part of the ADC config is for this specific application. This makes it easy or understandable even when you want to migrate the uh, application configuration across your HMC environments. So say you have deployed an application today using Stylebooks on one ADC. Tomorrow you wish to migrate that to another ADC or migrate it to cloud uh, ADC. You can do that very seamlessly using Stylebooks. This also future proofs your application configuration because not just the maintenance of the application is simplified, but even migration, as I mentioned in previous scenario, is uh, just a simple process with the help of Stylebooks. These are some of the examples of Stylebooks. Default Stylebooks uh, are LB, CS, SSL, Rewrite Responder, GSLB, WAF. A lot of default Stylebooks are present for ADC functions, which you can use. They are built in into ADM, so do go and try it out. There are a lot of default style books for enterprise level applications also. For uh, example, Microsoft Skype for Business, uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite, Citrix Storefront, etc. So you can go and uh, try those out as well if you're using any of those enterprise apps. And also style books are used widely within ADM for orchestration integration as well as in the auto scale configuration. Now with that intro, let me take you through a couple of stylebook enhancements which are done in the recent um, months. First one being automatic reconciliation of stylebooks. Now, as I mentioned, when we execute a stylebook on an ADC, the ADM stylebook understands that, okay, this configuration is what has been deployed on the ADC for this app by the stylebook. Now take an example where you've deployed a stylebook config pack on an ADC but the actual configuration on the, on the ADC has been tampered with. Say an admin has come uh, unintendedly and done something on, uh, on the ADC directly for this particular configuration. Uh, this can result in a mismatch between the config audit happening at ADM side and on the ADC side, and the admin would want to know any such config diff. So not only does the stylebook do a config diff, and bring out that you know there has been some change between the intended config and the actual ADC config, but it also uh, does an uh, automatic reconciliation uh, to bring the stylebook configuration or the app configuration to a desired state. So earlier we just did the config audit and showed the admin or showed you what the problem was and you could choose whether you want to reconciliate or not. Now it does all these operations in the backend intelligently so that when you as an admin go to ADM next to say do some further updates to your application via the config pack of stylebooks, uh, the update doesn't fail and such reconciliations are taken care of. So when you go to a stylebook, you go to do an update that is maintenance of an application, be it upgrading a simple parameter as well. We will uh, stylebooks will take care of finding out a config diff and pushing the automatic reconciliation. Let me also explain this via an example to make it simpler. Say stylebook SB1 was executed on your ADC, ADC1, and it resulted in a config pack CP1. Now, one of the configs in this CP1, which you've done for this application, which is app one, is uh, adding a binding to a particular service. Now the admin comes next to that config pack and wants to do some maintenance. Say he wants to change the LB method of app one from say round robin to least connection. So while he is doing this uh, in the background, uh, in the meanwhile, say some other admin has logged into ADC and he's done some mistakes by deleting the binding of this particular app. Basically he's messed around with the existing config of that app. What happens or how stylebooks will help in this scenario is stylebooks will be able to detect that, okay, some change has happened on the ADC and the config pushed from the stylebook is not same as what is currently running on ADC. It will figure that out. It will figure out that a binding has been deleted. It will re-add the binding in the background and go ahead with this particular update that the config now, wants, uh, that the admin now wants to do. For example, update the LB method. So all this will be taken care of intelligently by the stylebooks in the background, ensuring that the admin continues to have a smooth um, 
experience and everything as per what he desires. So you will see uh, in the when you go to update a config pack, where, which you will do whenever you want to maintain or update an application, you'll see that in one of the steps, you'll read a line called completed enforce of config on the ADC, which means that if there are any changes which have been detected or config this, Silebooks is taking care of it for you in the background. So that was the first RFE which we've done. Second one is to check a Silebook compatibility for upgrading a config pack. Now you have, um, as explained, whenever you deploy an application uh, using Stylebooks, it results in a configuration pack. Now tomorrow you may want to upgrade the Stylebook version. Say you have uh, executed Stylebook version one on an ADC. Tomorrow you want to add a certain new parameters to that Stylebook, do some changes to the configuration. You want to upgrade the config pack to another Stylebook version, say Stylebook version two. Now, before you do that, it's very uh, necessary for you, the admin, to understand whether upgrading to this new style book is going to impact any of your uh, existing configuration changes. Uh, that is to basically get a understanding whether the newer version of your style book is compatible with your older one or is it incompatible, which means that it's going to give you some problems. Uh, earlier, uh, note that earlier style books did not allow this at all. It only allowed you to upgrade the version of a style book if it wasn't really run on something. But now it can do this check for you uh, intelligently. So now on the ADM UI, you can uh, choose a config pack, choose uh, another style book, and it will tell you based on your newer style book selection if there are any changes which are going to impact your existing config negatively and whether you can proceed with this upgrade or cannot. Now I'll explain explain this with the help of two examples. First example is assume you are attempting to change the style book for a config pack and uh, you have some changes done in your newer style book, uh, but they are compatible. That means they are okay for you to go ahead with. In that case, uh, style book will just show you that this is compatible. It won't throw in, up any error. It will help display the changes before you actually go ahead with them for you to do a quick review and go ahead with the update. On the other hand, if you're doing any um, upgrade, which is kind of going to destroy or spoil your existing configuration, very simple example can be that some parameter which was mandatory in your previous style book version. Um, in, in the upgraded version, you kind of removed that parameter by mistake or made it non mandatory. In that case, it will flag it as an error and will not allow you to upgrade. Basically, it will tag it as incompatible. Let's see how both these examples look like. So this is my existing config pack. I want to use a different style book now. So I click on different style book. This is my current style book 1.2 version. Uh, target style book is 1.3. I have selected that target style book. And when I go to next, you will see that there's an information message only, which means that there is nothing to worry about. It's just showing you the compatibility analysis of what additional is going to happen here. And you can say that you've reviewed the changes, uh, acknowledge it and click on next. Now, second example is you go to upgrade such a style book and it sees the style book uh, system sees that there is certain error in your newer version of style book. You will see an error highlighted here with red. Uh, note that previously it was blue and informational. Now it's red and denoting a problem. It will not allow you to proceed. Uh, one of the examples, as I mentioned, is that one of your applications, say for example, timeout was a mandatory parameter in your older style book version, but you haven't uh, defined it or specified it in the newer version, uh, which is uh, a problem. So these are the examples for compatibility. It makes it really simple for a uh, admin who's trying to update an app to get uh, a assessment or assurance that any update he's doing to the app is at least taking care of this level of compatibility. Now we come to the third uh, enhancement, which is also a very interesting one um, come up from a couple of customers, which is to support nested parameter conditions. Uh, many of you would be knowing that we introduced last year the support for parameter uh, conditions that is based on the input which you have given to one field. You can actually control the allowed values or the uh, visibility of the rest of the fields in the style book. 
so now we also support these uh, in a nested format I'll, sh I'll explain how it comes into use so say you want to uh, specify certain conditions uh, within uh, specific conditions simple example can be that admin wants to loop through all the lbv servers till the lbv servers come to an end which is condition number one and then depending upon the protocol of each of these lbv servers he wants to assign the allowed values to the port so in that case you will need to specify condition within condition uh, stylebook now allows you to do that these are referred to as nested parameter conditions and it comes into use when your end action is dependent or is tied up to each item in the condition parameter so this is how uh, a simple example would look like uh, the example which i mentioned in the previous screen for example your first condition would be to loop through all the lbv servers in your environment till it reaches the end of the array and your second condition would be to check if the protocol of uh, the particular lbv server which is being currently looped for is of a certain value say https in that case the allowed value will be set to specific port say ssl port and there are and then and thereafter you can check for specific such protocols if the protocol is http allow for some other values and so on and so forth so just uh, some more varieties and variations of how you can use these conditional parameters uh, if you can see here the condition is mentioned as if the service type is not of type ssl then you can hide the input parameter for certificates because if the service type is not ssl you will not need this parameter so you can kind of control the um, visibility or how a style book would be viewed by uh, an admin or by all your admins in the org by doing or by using these conditional parameters. So this is one example. Second one is depending on a condition as to what is the input for an IP domain, you uh, put it up as a mandatory or required field or you put it up as optional. A third one could be depending on your service type, you can set the allowed values for the uh, service type. So if it is SSL, the allowed values can be SSL and so on and so forth. In the UI, it would look like this. So say this particular parameter, you have chosen the input as SSL. The next field will be automatically, and not necessarily the next field, any field, but in this example, uh, the next field will be auto-populated with the allowed values you've given in the definition. And lastly, we come to the nested conditional parameters, which we explained. So you can nest this condition in another condition also that is say you run a loop for all the lbv servers and then for every lbv server you check that if the lbv server type is not ssl you can hide the field for lbv server certificates so this is an amazing level of control you can have on your stylebooks usage with conditional parameters and even with nested conditional parameters that brings us to some of the operational level improvements we've done, not as uh, you know, heavy or advanced as the previous ones, but definitely something which um, the customers needed and we've introduced. Uh, for example, one of the requirements we got was to have a simple built-in function for SHA-256 uh, is to encrypt and store uh, you know, sensitive information in the background. So instead of doing it, we, this function gives you the ability just to use it quickly uh, for any sensitive parameter. So this is how you use the function. In the properties, you will have uh, this SHA-256 mention, and you can pass the uh, string to this particular uh, function. And then it will uh, perform the hash operation, and uh, that hashed string will be stored uh, in the background. So this gives additional um, you know, security. Uh, additionally, you can pass, instead of passing the input, you can also pass an expression so that that value is passed. Uh, this is one of the examples we have got. We have. Uh, many other built-in functions have also been added. And this was another requirement we had from customers, which we've introduced, is allow some of these reserved keywords uh, to be allowed in the stylebook definition, which were earlier not allowed. So that's a quick update from my end on stylebooks. I hope this was used. Uh, useful for all of you. Uh, for those of you who have not yet explored stylebooks, I request you to go and try them out and do let us know what you think of it and in case you need any further information. I'll now hand over uh, to Mayur for the next segment. Yeah, thank you, Sanyukta. Hello, everyone. Uh, 
good morning good afternoon good evening my name is uh, mayur patil i am from ads product management team and today i am going to give you the overview of what's new we have brought into the service graph right before jumping into the service graph like uh, those who are new and uh, hearing this service graph in the edm for a first time let me just uh, to uh, do the two minutes walk through on why it is essential for you and how it's going to help you in your organization right so just at a high level i would say that uh, being you are managing your monolith application or the microservice applications knowing the application health or knowing your how your applications are doing is very essential and the service graph is the app is a visualization tool which helps you to know how your applications are doing right so that is the main uh, visualization tool we are bringing to excel in your application delivery um, being it is as a ephemeral or the complex environment and uh, along with that uh, the from the feature set it bubbles up the anomalies uh, up front when you go and visualize the applications it it very well detects like uh, if there are any issue with any particular application in, in entire infrastructure which very well brings out into the service graph so that admin can take a look and uh, do the preactive measures on the on the application and the third but not least uh, it helps you to troubleshoot the microservice application so if you have a kubernetes based application or you have a microservices running in your deployment and knowing the health and knowing the uh, state of this microservices is very essential and to do that uh, we use this distributed tracing so that we can understand what are the latency and uh, we understand what is the issue with this application all all those things right like uh, knowing from the visualization and detecting the problem everything is very seamless with this adm service graph yes uh, and then uh, just to uh, make you like how it's going to be differentiated so uh, definitely uh, it, it is going to give you citrix is a well known uh, enterprise grade solution which offers you the solution than this open source endpoints right so this definitely you get a edge over to know and you get a support from us to uh, know all these details and this brings you the end to end visibility into your applications and as i was mentioning right troubleshooting your microservices makes easy with this so this is definitely a differentiator and just to give you the overview of like the how this uh, service graph look like so we uh we visualize all your infrastructure which are being uh, taken into the consideration and then we tell you about the golden metrics such as what how many http uh, errors you have how much time it has taken what is the total volume which are com in, coming in and com going out from our one application or from one adc instance right all those information at a different protocol level let's say if you have http or ssl or tcp metrics all the metrics you can visualize and then uh, the one of the differentiator which was i was which i was telling is the distributed tracing it is a very important uh, feature which uh, most of our customers ask for understanding the latency aspect of an application so that uh, they can know which application is taking more time than usual so that they can uh, understand the problem behind it and then they can root cause it so uh, definitely this is uh, one of the top feature right which we have implemented and now uh, after giving this overview of service graph right let me just uh, bring you to the continuous improvements that we are doing so what we have done like as we we, we have gathered the feedback from you and understood that how we can simplify this service graph and makes more improvement into it so few announcements we have done uh, in this quarter and in the previous quarter so for example when we have a service group right which shows in the discrete application view so once you um, zoom into it you will able to see that more details about what are the different services what are their ips all those details are also now visible from this service graph 
then uh, as i was mentioning right we we are showing you the golden matrix for each protocols one of them is ssl and in that uh, it is very important to know if there are any ssl issues what are those so we have simplified that so if you see that if any application or any adc instance is uh, showing you an ssl error and once you click on that it will bring uh, the page where all the details are listed and then how uh, this is going to be a hyperlink where you can just go and root cause and understand the issues behind uh, what is a the problem there and then some changes at the client level so client uh, we used to show some more information so we have brought down one new uh, aspect like how much data volume that client is generating for adc so that uh, information also we are uh, feeding in into the service graph and uh, also like uh, we understand right like as you are going to have more deployment and bigger infrastructure the complexity is going to increase and to know and to see like what are the different symbols which are going to get involved and how, uh, the visibility that we are, you want to know so we have introduced this legend on the right hand side where uh, we are explaining the details about what are the different uh, symbols that are used right from let's say node to the alerts all the details are visible here so that uh, you can easily understand and read this service graph right now just uh, let me take you to the actual live running uh, service graph right now i was just telling you what are the different uh, uh, new features right so for example as i was mentioning right this is my uh, live adm service graph as you can see like it has been populated now for the last one hour and uh, you can see like my, this is the end i, I have uh, my uh, a sample application running into the Kubernetes cluster and I have my VPX box which is doing the load balancing for those microservices and it is showing me that there is one SSL here. Once I click on it, it will just go to this uh, instance box under the SSL dashboard and it will bring down all the issues like what, what is the total uh, issue where it is failing, right? Like uh, so anything related to SSL issues, uh, if service graph is able to detect right through the service graph, uh, it will uh, help you to detect that. And uh, another thing, what I was saying, like in the in, uh, in the client section, once you go, uh, we can say like which client is generating how much traffic. So those uh, data volume is also shown here, and this is the legend which uh, talks about the symbols. Yes, so th that was a quick update about the ADM service graph. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, and I will definitely take your questions and I will be happy to assist you. If you have any queries related to understanding of this ADM service graph or uh, with the deployment of ADM service graph. Uh, with that, uh, I would request Avinash to take a control. Thank you, team. Hey, uh, hi, thank you, Mayur. Thanks for uh, taking us through the uh, improvements over the service graph. So uh, in the interest of time, I believe uh, we don't have a lot of time left to, for me to cover the primer section. So I will park it for uh, it for the next uh, webinar, which will be in the month of March. And there we can cover this. So uh, thanks. Thanks, everyone, uh, for uh, joining in Feb month webinar and, and see you all in the uh, next month webinar. Till then, have a... Uh, great month and a great day thank you bye bye